tea. Mm. Bigelow. Bigelow. That's the tea tonight. Bigelow. Let's be the get on my case for Lipton. <clears throat> Look it. Lipton is the tea of the people. I am a man of the people. Pete has a pink pineapple? My gosh, is there anything that Pete doesn't have? They keep it in his G80 cooler. Keep it in my, keep a pink pineapple in my, wait a second. I got that pink pineapple in my eighty cooler. A pink pineapple in my eighty cooler. Cause there's no one cooler than a man with a pink pineapple. There's actually no one cooler than Pink and Harris. And I can say that and not be embarrassed. Cause he's another Florida gardener. And he's got a pink pineapple. It had a ring, so that's cool. I have um, I've seen some interesting pineapples. I, there's some pink ones that are growing in the um, the park in the Riverland neighborhood of Fort Lauderdale. Somebody said there's pink pineapples down there, but they were not pineappling when I was there. <clears throat> so it's nice to see. Hey, Alejandra is a machete level. Machete level, Karen is a machete level. Scrubland Farms is machete level. Scott is machete. This is all the first round of um, of my my members who are now a. I've been here for a year. So, <clears throat> Scrubland Farms, do you know of anything cooler than a pink pineapple in a Yeedy cooler? I don't think so. I don't think so. All right. <laughs> Savannah says, "Hell, everyone." Message retracted. We saw it, Savannah. Hell, everyone. Gosh, you guys are getting weird tonight. Sorry, Savannah. I'm totally picking on you. Savannah's like, oh, perdition, people. <clears throat> so anyhow, um, it's very interesting. I had a great day. I had a great day. <laughs> Scrabbling Farm Centers, not to my knowledge. <laughs> edit! Edit! Oh my gosh. <clears throat> so, um, I had a great day. I, I met up with a uh, friend of mine and took a few kids over to her place to go do some gardening. Busted apart some uh, clumps of bananas. And for those of you who are asking, is this a good time to replant bananas, like if you're in a climate with frost? No. <laughs> no. This is not the best time to transplant bananas if there's frost coming. It's best to just leave them alone. Uh, but in this case, um, she's growing them for leaves for her pigs. So, um, and, and she wants to replant that whole area where they were, and they grew like crazy, and they made big clumps. The clump that I pulled on camera with the um, the meadow creature was not the biggest one. I pulled this huge clump first and then I was like, oh shoot, I should have done that on camera. Oh well, you know. <clears throat> Tex-Mex Gardener says, I'm lost on the machete stuff. If you are a um, channel member, meaning like like if you go down to the, uh, there is a become a member thing on the channel. If you're supporting the channel for five bucks a month, um, then you get the machete emoji and all that cool stuff. Like Richard, Richard just became a new member. Thank you, Richard. Welcome. And it's figure Richard, um, Richard, Richard, Richard should be a member already. He should just be an honorary member. Richard made this. This is a, this is an electric slide guitar, which I promise I'm gonna pay, pay for you guys at some point. This is the slide boat. This is a Richard or, original here. Um, you guys, there is so, there's so much talent. We're not just gardeners, you know. 
And, and you guys are actually um, ridiculously uh, generous. Um, I, I just got sent a whole bunch of seeds today from the Sand Hill Preservation Center. My goodness. So, <clears throat> I am... Um, I couldn't figure out who exactly sent these to me. Because <laughs> they, they came from the Sand Hill. I, I need to know if you're here. I have a guess, but I'm not sure. <clears throat> um, but thank you very much for the seeds. I've got, I've, I've probably got enough seeds for my, my gardens in the spring. And then, uh, not only that, I mean, this, there's some benefits to being back in the States, I'll tell you what. I, I, th there's a working mail system. So Leaf sent me uh, some seed trays and sent me these. Okay, these are really cool too. Um, look at this blue corn. See that? I am a, I am a sucker for corn varieties. Uh, watermelon radish, some um, cover crops, soil builder peas and oats. I mean, my goodness. Okay, look, more, more. Blue wheat, okay, this is getting its own bed. Blue wheat, bright blue seed heads keep their color even after drying, making the stunning ornamental and flower, flower arrangements and crafts. Okay, that's good, that's going to its own bed. And then this, um, these yellow potted beans. Yellow potted beans are actually my favorites. Um, because that was the first, the first first bean I grew when I was a kid was um, the, the burpees yellow wax bean, so. Um, thank you very much, Leaf. And, and artichoke. I've never tried artichoke before. Florida was never good for artichoke. I don't know if Alabama is going to be, but hey, we're going to try it. Winter squash, kohlrabi. This is, I mean, holy moly. It's like ridiculously generous. Um, and then all these, <clears throat> all these here from um, Sand Hill Preservation Center. Um, Flint corn. And now you know what I'm gonna have to do. This is this is actually really funny because I just I just bought some seeds of my own from Johnny Selected Seeds, and uh, I bought some some corn. So now I have blue corn. <laughs> I have one yard. Corn cross pollinates like crazy. I have one yard here. I have I have. Uh, Shawnee Pearl Flint, Rio Grande Blue. I wonder what else I got. Yeah, I know there's another one in here, and I got some. Oh my gosh, this is, this is nuts. Um, there's a popcorn in here too. So I, I gotta be careful. You don't want to cross the popcorn with your grain corns. Uh, it makes for a really hard, a really hard time for the grinder. But it, I, this may be the beginning of an original um, David the Good corn variety because I'm just going to let all these suckers cross and see what we get. You get some really weird stuff and you can kind of stabilize it over time by interbreeding them. Corn is so much fun because uh, it, it immediately you can tell that the pollination has you know, um, made a difference because you'll see like little, little different colored um, kernels all over the ears. So. <clears throat> So thank you guys very much. It's very generous and, and way more than I deserve. I've been so welcomed coming back to the States. I can't even, I can't even tell you guys. Uh, it was, you know, it was hard to leave. Um, but it's really good to be back. And uh, it's, it's cool to have like uh, gardening people all over the place. And it's funny too, cause I, you know, I wrote, I wrote Leaf, um, Leaf sent these, uh, soft neck garlic here I actually went out this morning before I got this package looking for some soft neck garlic to plant and the feed store which had said they, they had them on order they didn't have them and everybody's selling out of them and then and then here it is <clears throat> so yeah that's going in the beds and so now now that we talked about all these seeds um, a lot of these seeds are going to, or some of these seeds are going to, because a lot of these are for spring, but some of these seeds are going to go into our test bed. So I wanted to show you the diagram that I made. Yeah, the prodigal son. 
That's right. Richard said, I'll make a video of my property and upload it to YouTube for you to see. Yes, that would be... Um, Yellow Beans doing really well. Broad Beans, Snap Peas going off. Excellent. Hey, have a good night, Scrubland. <clears throat> yes, thank you, Derek. I appreciate it. I did see that. You can grind popcorn, but it tends to really be difficult on the grinder. Uh, depending on your grinder, it, it's very, very hard. Um, <laughs> no, don't send me an amplifier, for goodness sakes. <laughs> and welcome, uh, Raymond Respress. I can't say that. What is that? I, I, I? The third? Raymond Respress the third. Okay, I like that. Thank you. Welcome. New member. Welcome to the Crazy Gardening Channel. So, I want to show you guys this. Speaking of crazy, um, let me show you my amendment trials layout. If I move to this side, you can see this. This is the this is the the, the tentative layout. I'm gonna post the uh, video that I recently did. But this is, I've got, I've got these beds at a three foot, let me see here, I'll find this thing. All right, I'll show you this. Here are the beds. Uh, they are five foot by five foot. There are 12 beds. And, <clears throat> well, welcome, my goodness, welcome Eric. Nice to have you here. Thank you for the support, Eric, Raymond, and uh, and Richard, all in all in one night. Man, fantastic! Thank you very much. Uh, sometimes we, I, I, it reminds me, I've got to post some new download codes and things for uh, for members only. So those of you who are members, I have posted free download codes. You will see members only posts occasionally where I'm just talking to you guys. And every once in a while, we'll do a members only stream. It it was very difficult to do when I was down on the island. Uh, but, hey, you know. Yeah, Scott says, look at me, Mom, I'm doing science. So this here is the science. And the layout looks like this right here. I think I look better standing in that bed, don't you? Don't I look more natural outside? Here's me inside. Hi. I'm David the Good. Hi, I'm David the Good. Hi, let's talk about gardening or something. I don't know. Let's talk about gardening. So here's what I'm looking at. Manure, urine, dynagro, alfalfa, 10, 10, 10. We have to do a 10, 10, 10 bed. You know why? Because everybody does 10, 10, 10. I mean, everybody that's not into the organic thing. So I, I went and I bought 10, 10, 10. Cheers. NPK. DJ NPK. So we've got manure. We have what? No cover crop only bed. The problem with doing the cover crop bed is we're not growing any food in it and it kind of has to go to the next year. So if we wanted to do a cover crop trial, it makes sense to do a no cover crop. You know, doing a bare area of ground versus a cover crop area. So it's sort of a doesn't really work for these five by five things. So, um, <clears throat> Eric says, glad to make it official. Been hanging out with you for a couple of months. As an engineer, your methods are right up my alley. Well, thank you very much. Your your brain probably works much more logically than mine. I I enjoy the the scientific side of it, and I really enjoy reading about other people's experiments. But I have not done particularly well over the year at or, you know over the years of doing the the test control timing and the exact, you know, um, the exact things. There's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff that I do to see, will it work or will it not work? But it's not rigorously scientific, but uh, I'm very glad to have you here. So if anything ever looks really dumb to you, I could, I could use an engineer to tell me what to do uh, or, or where I'm falling off. I had somebody show up um, 
and and mentioned my cover crop thing. They didn't like my cover crop layout. They're like, well, sometimes more is just more. It's not actually better. You know, you made this big mix of stuff. And and, and I was like, okay, well, that's kind of irritating because what I like to do is just throw a bunch of seeds out there and see what takes and see what is going to live and do experiments. But the guy knew something about cover crops and he linked to two different uh, sites which were both very useful with more information and I was like, okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, uh, you know, it's good, to, it's good to, I like to stay very, very humble. Let me just put it that way. Um, because I don't know everything. <clears throat> manure. I've got a manure source. I found a manure mine. And uh, it's across the across the street from me. There was a there's a field where they have been keeping cows off and on for some years, and there was a big rotted area of manure, and there were uh, tomato plants growing in it. So I figure that's probably safe. <laughs> uh, herbicide safe. A bed that is fed with only urine. And I have all kinds of donors lined up for that. If you want to donate. Um, I'm just kidding. Dynagro. Dynagro is a fertilizer which is often used by a hydroponics gardener. It is a it's a fertilizer that contains 16 soluble nutrients and exactly the balance that plants need, according to um, you know according to their website. It's often used by by marijuana and cannabis growers, and they swear by it and they say it's amazing. And so uh, I figured, why not? We'll do a Dynagro test. It looks like it's got a really good balance of stuff. Uh, and, and many people have talked about the the powers of alfalfa being tilled into the ground. So we're going to do a bed where we just till alfalfa into the ground. It would be kind of cool. And then we're going to do a bed with 10, 10, 10. We're just going to turn 10, 10, 10 into the ground. This biochar with Dynagro, you need to soak the biochar to charge it in something. You know, some people say use compost tea. Other people use urine. Other people... Uh, have it's just said put a nutrient solution. I was like, well, biochar, there, there we go. It's got 16 things. So I've already soaked four buckets of biochar with Dynagro uh, elements, and I figure we kind of know exactly what we have in that case. Uh, and then we're gonna do a lasagna garden. So one of the gardens, instead of being a, a mound, is actually the one that is two beds in front of me to the kind of the towards the bottom right. That one is flat. See, I watered these beds ahead of time so they actually showed up for the picture because they weren't showing up very well when I first took a picture of them. And I, my son was up in the cherry tree taking pictures down from above. Um, <clears throat> the, that one is flat. So that one right there is gonna get a layer of cardboard. I'm going to throw a layer of manure on it. I'm going to throw leaves on it. I'm going to do a full out best lasagna bed I can build. And then we will plant into that one. And then um, you can see we've got the control bed. So the control bed is there towards the middle. And that will be the bed with nothing on it whatsoever. And then there will be one next to it which I, reminds me, I have to burn more biochar because I accidentally charged all my char, all 20 gallons of it. I already charged it already with Dynagro and I meant to not do that, but I was talking to a gardening friend and um, the, the, the it, it was like, I was having this conversation and I was sifting the biochar and filling it in buckets and then I just started pouring the nutrient solution. I'm just like, oh yeah, okay, I'm talking. And I was like, after, like the next day, I'm like, wait a minute, I was only gonna charge some of it. So um, there's, no, yeah, I don't have like a blank batch of biochar at this point to till under. <laughs> uh, Neptune's Harvest Seaweed and Fish Fertilizer. That is like a fish emulsion with seaweed in it. And I have seen videos where people swear by it. They fed it to their orchids, and the orchids get huge, and they put it in their monstera plants, and you know. Um, so we're gonna try that. Neptune's Harvest Seaweed and Fish Fertilizer. We will do one with that. We will do one with Steve's Mix. That's the mix that Steve Solomon recommended to me. That one will be till N. And then DFSW, for those of you who don't know 
is Dave's Fetid Swamp Water. And you can see videos of me making the Fetid Swamp Water. It's what I write about in my book, Compost Everything, The Good Guide to Extreme Composting. That is the way you can stretch a small amount of soil fertility a long, long ways. A bit of compost, a bit of manure, a bit of Epsom salts, um, whatever you have around, some seaweed, uh, kitchen scraps. Currently I have shrimp shells, some cow manure, uh, some chicken parts, and uh, comfrey leaves, some kelp meal in the batch, and I'll throw some more in before I go. <clears throat> So, um, yeah, that's not what he's talking about, Joe. That is, that is completely wrong. The drinking from your own cistern is, isn't, is talking about not, not, um, running around with other women, just like you, you don't go to your neighbor's house for a drink of water, you know, so it doesn't have anything to do with it. Um, yeah, the fetid swamp water is something similar to the compost tea, except it's anaerobic. <clears throat> Karen says, do you think I can grow my Monstera deliciosa in a big pot while it bloom fruit if I do so? Uh, it will grow very well. I don't know that it will bloom or fruit. They, uh, they grow very well in pots, but I haven't heard of people fruiting them in pots. Generally, people are kind of seem to be surprised when they fruit. They really like to climb up trees outside. <clears throat> um... Yeah, so the, the lasagna bed works really well um, if you want to build soil. And the, the lady whose house I was at today uh, did a big garden with um, deep mulch over wet, poorly draining soil. And so she deep mulched it and she grew a lot out there and she has a lot of stuff and she's growing it organically. It's beautiful. Uh, it was just kind of really, really bright today and I had my camera over there and I was thinking of you know, filming her talking about the garden, but we made a huge mess of the garden, yanking out bananas and dragging stuff all over and digging things up. And it was, um, it was very bright. As you can see by the, uh, the footage that I posted earlier today, it was not particularly great. So, <clears throat> so let me, let me run through this with you guys. Do you see this is where this is where audience participation comes in. Uh, we have a lot of intelligent gardeners uh, watching right now because I, I, I know quite a few of you. You guys know what you're doing about. Yeah, wait, no hookah culture bed. That would be like a three-year project. Just keep planting with Nemo. <clears throat> uh, yes, this stream will be posted. So. I'm looking at this thing and I'm going, does it really matter if I have a biochar bed where we just till biochar in and I don't charge it? You know, is it like, is it wrong? Is anybody going to be upset that instead of, you know, charging biochar with compost tea, which I don't have any, um, uh, I, you know, I charge it with Dynagro. My, the reason I put the Dynagro alongside of it was I figured, okay, we'll do a bed where it's just foliar fed with Dynagro and then we'll do the biochar bed with Dynagro because uh, it might, you know, there might be enough residual dynagro in that biochar after it soaks stuff up that, uh, you know, it could just grow well because of the dynagro, not because of the biochar. So I was thinking I'd do another one where it's just biochar, you know. Um, but the, the biochar, I know what's gonna happen when you till biochar into the soil, if you have not charged it first, it will soak up the nutrition in the soil. There's not much nutrition in the soil to begin with, so we're probably going to end up with a dead bed that's like worse than the control bed. That's my guess. <clears throat> um, and then, you know, Dave's fetid swamp water. Uh, it would be nice to try that next to Steve's mix because Dave's fetid swamp water is the way I, I gather a whole bunch of different fertile material and, and use it to feed the plants. You know, I try to grab as wide a variety as possible, so I'm curious to see how that goes next to Steve's mix. I'm also curious to see, uh, I'm very curious to see how Steve's mix compares to 10, 10, 10. Because, you know, the gardeners around here, they're like, oh, we just tilled it up. They round up a patch of ground, till it under, and use 10, 10, 10, or 13, 13, 13, or 666, or something like that. And they just, that's, that's the gardening. And they grow plenty of vegetables that way. 
but you know, how are they going to grow compared to a, a much more organic and a much more micronutrient rich, you know, type of a type of an amendment? How will they grow next to just straight compost? Um, one of you guys said they, they, they think that it'll probably really take off and do well with 10, 10, 10, but there's going to be a taste difference. So that'll be interesting too. You know, what's going to happen? I don't know. That's going to be interesting. And how will the lasagna garden do? You know, the first year it may not do particularly well. So maybe what I'll try to do is um, is do this, you know, do this garden for the fall because it's getting it's getting actually really late to be planting much. Even though this is zone eight B, it's um, pretty much brassicas and peas are about it. Lettuce is going to get roasted pretty soon here. Um, the I'm just figuring what are what are kind of common things that people would use and a few less common things and some things that are kind of out there like Dynagro or Neptune's Harvest. I think probably a lot of people don't necessarily grow their their gardens just with foliar feeding, but when you're in a situation like we are with really, really poor soil, if you treat it like it's a hydroponics garden, the soil holds the roots and you just drench them with a nutrient solution, you know. Um, yeah, we'll see. Dolan says, will the urine have a taste difference? It may. <clears throat> um, Scott says Steve's mix seems like it will taste better. 10, 10, 10 will grow really well. I'm looking forward to, to how they all do. Yeah, I am too. Trudy says, does anyone do wood chips in Alabama? Are you going to do that? Yeah, I'm going to get wood chips for the lasagna garden. I generally don't grow in deep wood chips. I grow perennials in wood chips. If I can get wood chips for a food forest project, I pour them all over. I don't use them in my annual gardens, mostly. Where's the bed for your enemies, Christopher said. Well, I couldn't talk about it on YouTube, could I? <clears throat> Karen says, what about a bed with granular organic fertilizer? Well, that's not a bad idea. That would be interesting to try a granular organic fertilizer next to 101010. Um, but I would have to sacrifice one of these beds. If you guys were to sacrifice one of these beds and switch it for a granular organic fertilizer, what do you think? No, you don't taste the urine. My gosh, you guys are just obsessed with urine. Just stop. Just because it's on the screen doesn't mean you have to talk about just talking and talking and talking. What is this, middle school? So, if we were to sacrifice a bed, which one of these is the least interesting to you guys? I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit here and I'm going to, I'm gonna let you guys. I think is useful because it's a common, uh, you know, here we go. The biochar is not charged. That one bed is not charged. Richard said, I'd like to see a bed tried out with just fish under your plants. That's a good idea. I'd have to get some fish and try it. But David, you're the one who put the word urine up on the screen. Golly. Wait a sec. <clears throat> Oh yeah, let's see. I'll, I'll try to find something. So, uh, <clears throat> what 
we'll fix it. We'll fix it. We'll fix it. Let's see. I'm going real slow here. This is really hard. Like, my computer has a broken finder. And now you know that I have a Mac. <laughs> Let's see here if I can... There we go. Let's just, let's just do this. Now you guys don't have to, you don't have to look at it anymore. How's that? Is that better? <clears throat> I do have a Steve mix plot going. I have a couple of them going, but I think it would be interesting to just do the five by five. Um, Cause I, I have not treated the bed differently from from the other ones, I need to make it more sciencey. Yeah, it clearly needs six more beds. Uh, Yeedy says, "Can I bury Gordon's fish sticks in the garden?" Yeah, absolutely. It's probably better to bury it in the garden than it is to eat those things. They'll break down. <clears throat> so we're looking at either uncharged biochar or or urine. Yeah, I think the ten to ten is important important too, Chase. The thing is, is that like after a year or so, the biochar might get better. <laughs> DFSW is Dave's Fetid Swamp Water. It's the uh, anaerobic compost tea that I make. Well, fruit trees are cat lovers, Nancy. The fruit trees probably love the cats. Um... Okay, so let's see. So it looks like we're gonna move out this biochar bed. If I'm getting this right, maybe I will put a poll up after this. <clears throat> I will do a poll post and we'll find out which one we're gonna chuck. Uh, I could build three more beds. I'm, I'm getting into the area, if you can see it here, let me see if I can show you. I'm getting into the area do, 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 do. Oh, them that is so cool I love this like look at that yeah, that's awesome all right so as you can see here I'm getting I have I have cut the the bed that is down to the bottom right is one of one of my son's beds he is um, growing turnips to sell to neighbors so this is as far down on the screen there as the beds can go. <clears throat> Up to the top, do you see that that is a four foot wide path where they end? To the right is, a, is mostly tree roots from a magnolia and an oak that are right there. And so that area is just a little bit of patchy grass. To the left, it's starting to get shadier. So this is kind of the space that I have at the moment without starting a new area. So I have 12 beds to test. <clears throat> you really do need a DFSW. Uh, Dave's Fetid Swamp Water. Anaerobic. Anaerobic. All right, here we go. So this is what we're looking at right now. We may... Um, I might chuck the uncharged biochar, but I didn't know if it was like cheating to charge the biochar with Dynagro. I just read it needed a nutrient solution, and I figured I'll go for the for a nutrient solution that was already balanced for plants. <coughs> um, I do smoke. I smoke cigars, and that's not why my voice sounds like this. My voice sounds like this because I might have caught the corona this last week. Show. 
Biochar should have a separate experiment that tracks it over several years. Yeah, I agree, Pastor Don. So, no, I don't smoke weed. I've never tried it. I'm not interested. It's just not appealing to me. <clears throat> I'll tell you why I look baked all the time. It's because the the um, muscles that are in the tops of my eyelids are missing, like, partly. And so when I was younger, they asked if I wanted to have my eyes operated on. And, like, we could, all you gotta do is put a couple of stitches in there, and they could make it so you could open your eyes all the way. Now, my eyes don't open all the way. That's it. That's me trying as hard as I can to open my eyes. They don't open all the way. So everything from, like, here up, I can't see very well. So they asked me, you know, the doctor's like, do you, do you want to get this, you know, it would be very simple, and and I'm like, nah, I'll just go the way God made me. And, and I didn't want to, like, I was afraid that I would look like this all the time. You know, hi, nice to meet you, my name is David. You know, so I just go with the, I go with this look. <clears throat> but people, people, when I was in school, when I was in college, people were like, this girl's like, so, you want to come back to my place? I'm like, smoke out. I'm like, no, I don't smoke. She's like, seriously? You know, yeah. Don't smoke, I just look like I'm blitzed all the time because of my eyelids. So, there you go. There's a whole story. <clears throat> I kind of look baked all the time. <clears throat> Tola says, instead of looking high on weed, it would be meth. I think if I was to pick a, pick a drug, I'd probably be kind of a bath salts guy. I grew up in South Florida. I am Florida man. So anyhow, we're, we're gonna we're gonna run through this um, this bed experiment, and and we'll we'll try test them all side by side. I'm so psyched about it. <coughs> It'll be very interesting to just kind of see how things go, and then to do a taste test at the end. Now, multiples of you have asked me what I am going to plant in these beds, and that is going to be another thing. But I'm going to ask you. Let me tell you what I have. I have a few heads of garlic, thanks to a leaf. Probably enough to put two garlics, <laughs> one or two in each bed. I already planted all of my multiplier onions, but if I if I had more garlic, I would plant more garlic. I just couldn't get any from the feed store. <clears throat> Um, yeah, hey, have a good night, Richard. Thanks for joining the channel, too. Much appreciated. Glad. See, Richard's name is in green. Um, I'm not baked. I'm just surgically challenged. That's right. That's what I should tell people, Tom. I'm not baked. I'm just surgically challenged. I'm just missing this thing in my eyes. Normal people have. Okay, so my thoughts uh, on the beds. <clears throat> what I was thinking so far, I'm going to write them down and then you guys, yeah, orchids, that's a great idea. They have to, each bed has to have the same crop in it or crops. So I was thinking of doing um, radishes, daikons, mustard, um, I was going to do turnips, <clears throat> kale, maybe garlic, and peas, and do each bed, you know, like grid it out with the same crops in it. Beets and carrots are both good, yeah, but man, carrots are, I hate growing carrots, they're so pokey. Turnips. Turnips would be a really good one um, because I know we have a market for turnips already. Garlic, cabbage, broccoli, and radish. <clears throat> the cabbage and the broccoli, I'm a little concerned it's getting too cold for them to do anything until spring. They may just sit there all the way through, but I don't know. This is my first year growing here. Rat tail radish would be cool. I have not grown that one yet. 
Drop the beats. <laughs> hey, Liberty Not License. Yeah, you've made it in time for the closing song. We're not there yet. Um, I have to stay on. Nobody sent me a super chat yet. I have to stay on until you get a super chat, I guess. Don't give him a super chat. He'll leave us. How about Kohlrabi? Joe Serrano said. How about Kohlrabi and all those test beds? How about Kohlrabi? It looks like a spaceship. Don't you want to grow some of that crazy stuff? growing carrots, Scott. You know what I like growing? <clears throat> I like growing pumpkins. I like growing yams because all of the you plant a big thing and then they just grow like crazy. Carrots, it's like you, you sprinkle these things on the ground, you better not get them too deep and they're not coming up. You gotta keep them watered and take really good care to get those carrots to come up and then they're pokey, 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 pokey for months. No, we can't talk about the Z vegetable on this channel. <laughs> Karen, thank you. Karen sends a super chat. Thank you very much. Thank goodness. Thank you. Selling the farm. Did you sell the farm? Selling the farm? Or are you still or like perpetually selling the farm? Thank you very much for the super chat. I am glad to be back stateside, safe and sound. <clears throat> uh, Leaf says, did I send you? <laughs> Have some government magic squares, bro. Boo Bear says, the hyphae of the grabbler. I don't even know what all that, that's, that's great. Thank you. Uh, yeah, let me see. Pink, pink, what was it? Pink banana squash. Hey, well, look at what we, you sent me, Kohlrabi. <clears throat> Not a lot of it, though, so we got to be careful. Um, oh, man, the black Spanish round winter radish is one that I wanted to try for a long time. So that is good, that is good. The trick is, is we have to plant the same things in every bed, so I've got to actually, like, space out the seeds. Squash winter, honey nut. No, I do not see um, pink banana squash. That sounds cool. That sounds really cool. Mangoversal. Mangoversal. You know, I had seeds for that once. I didn't get to grow it because I moved out of the country. Into the kale zone. Karen says, I have two packs of Danny corn that I got from Deep South Homestead, but I probably won't be growing them in the spring. Would you like them? Yeah, what the heck? I'll mix them into the, the corn patch. I'll just, I'm going to mix every corn, I guess. <clears throat> Chard and turnip greens is not a bad idea. They would go through. Spinach and beet greens. Boy, but both of those are really... Um, high oxalic content like beets and spinach are both super high on oxalic acid uh pastor john says in your zone kale would be the best show planting this time of year i, I think you're right yes it's not a bad idea <clears throat> honey nut yeah got that cabbage palms that's a good idea alan <laughs> Cabbage is not a bad idea. It just it should be like this big at this point, and I'm starting everything from seeds because uh, I got here so late. I only got here mid August, and I've been working as fast as I can to get gardens in. It took me some time. I had to borrow the tiller, I had to rake things out, I had to gather gather myself together, do a lot of bits and pieces. Scott says, I can't figure out. How to eat that kale satisfactorily, satisfactorily. 
I seems like tough yard clippings, no matter how I cook it. I think you need to change varieties. Dinosaur kale. I think it's a little more tender than that crinkly Siberian chunk. Sometimes kale. Here's a really good use for kale. Give it to your chickens and the GPA. Then you don't have to consume that stuff directly and you get really yellow What's the best weed for a hangover? A really good hangover. Probably peppermint on the temples. Thank you very much, Liberty Net License. Um, $14 for the shoe, the Good Children Fund. $6 for the overseas Googling tag. Thank you. Much appreciated. And thank you very much, Joe. Sending the equivalent of five USD for your tip jar. Irie Florida Mon, I'm so glad. So glad to be back. <clears throat> I'm only four miles from the Florida border. It's pretty funny. Hop, shoots, wasabi roots. These are good. I would like to plant some horseradish. It's a good idea. Ginger is not a bad idea, but ginger, we're not going to get any results until uh, next year. Asparagus isn't a bad idea. Leeks are not a bad idea. Um, I'll have to get starts on those. <clears throat> I have a lot of seeds. A vermico uh, vermicompost garden bed is a very good idea, Doland. Uh, I actually am going to start a vermicompost bed again. Jeff Watton posted a video on vermicomposting in a bathtub, which I really felt was quite good. Um, hmm. Yeah, with biochar is a good idea. I'll probably, you know... I mean, it would make sense, everybody wants, it, it might make sense to just grow one crop across all the beds, you know, just plant every bed gets 25 turnips in it, you know, that kind of thing. One per square foot, 25 turnips. That's really simple. It's not particularly inventive. <laughs> and it may not give us the same kind of results, you know, I mean, it would, it would be really simple though <clears throat> really simple particularly because I could make a little template for for the for our engineers here I can make a little five foot template with five corks nailed on the bottom of it or five pieces of dowel and go bump 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 and punch the holes you know for the system yeah, I have strung an acoustic with electric strings, but it doesn't sound nearly as good. So it's easier to play, but it doesn't sound as good. So I don't do that. <clears throat> I love the vermicomposting thing. I just have to get back to it. I've got to get a big, I'm looking for an old bathtub uh, or something, you know, but there are so many things when you move internationally and you lose most of your, your life and all the stuff you've accumulated. When I moved over there, I lost a ton of stuff. When I moved back, I lost a ton of stuff. So it's not like I can just go out and, you know, I used to have an old bathtub. I used to have uh, old feed troughs and, and, you know, hot tubs that I had plants growing in and all kinds of cool stuff like that. And, and you don't, you know, you don't realize like, oh, I, I, I could just go and get uh, some screws or some nails from the from the garage, you know. And you can't do that when you've moved and you've left everything behind in a foreign country. 
it's it's like you have to restock everything. It's annoying. It's it's like I have you know cans from the time I was a teenager that had you know nails and screws and stuff in them. You know, or eye hooks to hang pictures with. I like to paint, so I had a whole bunch of eye hooks. That kind of stuff. You end up you know losing a lot of that when you when you move uh, or old tools. Try to ship a. Um, you know, a shovel internationally, that kind of thing. You gotta start over everything again. Hey Sean. Yeah, it's a lot of turnips. Um, let's let's see how many turnips that would be. That'd be a lot of turnips. Nobody ever wants that many turnips. Twenty-five turnips per bed times twelve beds is three hundred turnips. Let's say we sell those turnips. We could sell those turnips for a quarter each to make 75 bucks off those beds, man. 75 bucks. Right, you, you drain the leachate from the tub hole when you, um, the, the drain. <clears throat> Tommy says, how about half the bed some root vegetable, the other half wheat or barley? That's not a bad idea. I, I've got this really cool blue wheat here. Um, interesting, interesting idea. It's just got to be something that we can take this cold, you know. Blue wheat. There's not enough seeds in here. See, if it, if it was, if I was not doing an experiment, what would make sense would be to simply. Um, plant, you know, if, if I had that many beds, I would just make one bed of turnips and one bed of mustard and one bed of just stuff thrown together and one bed of wheat, that kind of thing. But we don't, it's not really set up that way. For those of you who are joining us now, let me show you what we're talking about. <clears throat> These are the amendment trials. These beds have been dug already. And we're looking at side by side in this really poor sand. And these are the different things we're going to test. And we're going to see how they grow over the course of the fall and winter. And then how things grow in the spring, you know. Pardon me. <clears throat> so we're looking at this here. And here is the other. This is the shot of the beds actually in the ground. Live performance for compost your enemies. <laughs> I, I don't even remember the chords. I uh, live performance. Live performance with a picture of me in a garden bed. Next to your mother. Next to your mother. And always say please become friends and compost your enemies. Yeah. Okay. We can just do this. We can do this a completely different way because there's nothing that says that it's the right way. Bits in a sand trap. That is my garden. It's incredible. Welp. 
wheel. Um, <laughs> in each in each bed, one brassica, one beat, one hardy legume. That's not a bad idea. Um, Yes, uh, so Liberty Lot License says, is this in addition to his improvements from his scientist friend or instead of? No, this is more experimenting. Um, now that I am back in the States and things are easy to deal with, each one of these beds is going to have a different amendment or combination of amendments in it. One of them will be a lasagna garden. One of them will be fertilized with, with manure, but we may, do, we may ditch that for something else. One of them will be biochar with dining grow. We may ditch the biochar bed by itself. I'm not sure how that's actually gonna work. Um, might just, you know, I don't know. And a dining grow is a liquid fertilizer. Uh, urine can be diluted six parts water to one part. Um, urine, and, and people are always like, it's the best, it's such a good fertilizer. Okay, so let's try it alongside some other things. Uh, 10, 10, 10, which is what people commonly put here. They just throw 10, 10, 10 on the ground. Neptune's Harvest, Seaweed and Fish Emulsion. And then Steve's Mix, that's the scientific mix. And then DFSW is Dave's Fetid Swamp Water. And then people have told me multiple times that alfalfa tilted into the ground makes a good bet. So we're going to try it. It's going to be very exciting. And we'll see how it goes. So we're just going to have to line up. I'm definitely going to plant some turnips, I guess just because turnips grow really well and they're fun to grow, not because I actually like to eat them. I don't really like to eat them. <clears throat> I just like to grow them. But, you know, maybe they'll taste better with all of them. Let's see if that does it. Stop my stream, restart. Test, test, test. Okay. <clears throat> Working? <laughs> 